Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. All right, if you weren't following me, the previous video, I did the same Mickey Mouse. The only difference is that um, I treated the black as a separate color. I always do that, but <laughs> normally I treat it as the black background. Um, but in the last video, what I did was I made each one of these black parts an individual piece that would then be placed on and then had a separate black background. It was a lot more steps, a lot more work, but it will look more seamless. However, if that is not what you're up to, then we are gonna do this one where you're gonna use black glitter cardstock for the black pieces. So we're not gonna isolate the black pieces. If you're just like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> I promise you, watch the video that came before this one. Um, all right, so let's do this. This is an image within Design Space, so you can just go to Images here, and you can type in Mickey, it's this one, or you can click on the eye. This is, um, oh, is this the same one? Yeah, you can always type in by the item number here, okay? All right, um, and if you have Cricut Access, like I do, the images are 50% off, so this would only be a dollar. But I like using Design Space Images for this reason, is that everyone can practice and follow along with me. You don't pay for it until you go to make it, so don't make it. <laughs> All right, so let's cancel out of this. All right, here's our image. Let's click and change the height to 30 inches. And because it's a locked image, the width is gonna change proportionately, and that's what we want. All right, so let's zoom out, uh, zoom out so that we don't have to scroll up and down. All right, so this is 30 inches, and I feel like I have the wrong image, which I do. So let's go back to images for a second. That is not the one that I did before. Um, Where are you? Okay. It was the, is it this one? Mickey Stan, oh, it was this one. All right. This is the one that we had before, so I apologize. All right, so let's get rid of this one. <clears throat> All right, here is our guy at 30 inches. I was gonna say, because last time the width was, um, I remembered it being more than 21 inches. All right, and it's because of the tail. Okay, so <laughs> we have this at 30 inches. Now, I just wanna point out on the right-hand side panel, this is where you can see all your layers. In this one, I don't understand why there's a white background as well. It's basically invisible because everything sits on top. You can't even see this layer. So, and they have a white layer for the gloves and everything else. So I am just going to grab this one. So you select it and I'm just gonna click on the delete button. We don't need that one. All right, so at 30 inches, let's ungroup and move all the colors off of this image, okay? Just to make sure that it's all the right size. I know it is because I just did the previous one. Um, but here are the, the white pieces. The white pieces are all um, welded together technically because it's showing as one image, right? It's one layer, one image. We're gonna break apart these images because it's 12.5 by 13.76. It's too big to send to the Cricut to cut. So what you wanna do is, I always use a square, but you can use whatever shape that you want. We're gonna slice these images apart so that they are um, within a size that can cut. And that also allows you to make it more efficient on the paper, because you can move it around and squeeze them more closer together. So technically you can slice out these pieces into one, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. As long as the one piece that you're isolating, that you're removing from the group, has to be completely covered in the new shape, okay? So in this square is the entire glove. So then what you wanna do is you wanna grab the square and the glove and slice. And we can delete this, we don't need that. So here is the glove, right? And you can use the same square We'll do the other glove here. So you can see my glove is completely within this square and only this square and only that piece. So then you grab the two, the square and the white, 
and let's remove that. So now we have these two pieces. So on your cut mat, you could even do something like this. You can really squeeze it in and it's much more efficient that way. The buttons you can separate by themselves or you can just separate them together as buttons. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna separate the eyes and the buttons and I'm gonna keep them together. So see here are my eyes and here are the buttons. All right, okay, so this we can get rid of as well as this. Okay, here are the shoes. The shoes, they are so efficient already. I'm just gonna keep them together and they, you can cut them on, the, on your mat, right? 11 by seven, basically. Here are the pants. The pants are good as well. So it is such a seamless file. I love this image. Um, the face is great as well. And then here's the top. Now with the face, just like the princesses, what I like to do is um, in case there are seams running down the eyes and the mouth, I like to duplicate the face and then go to contour and you're gonna hide all and then we're gonna change the face to black. Now in this case, let me get, get over there. So what will happen is this face is gonna sit on top, so I'm gonna send it to the front. You're gonna have this black face behind it. So if there was a seam running down this eye, it is now seamless because it's covered by this black piece. You're probably wondering, well, what the heck about the mouth and the other eye? <laughs> and that's because it's not enclosed. So you see that gap right there? That's why we can't contour it out. So this is an easy, easy fix. What you wanna do is you wanna bring in a circle and we're just gonna close off these gaps, okay? So I'm gonna bring this circle in right there. And that's, oh, I'm gonna move it up just a little bit more. And that's gonna give it like a nice, um, I'm gonna just scroll in a little bit more, zoom in for you. That's gonna cover it like almost perfectly. And then I'm going to duplicate that circle because I also want to close this gap right here. Okay, now what you wanna do is you wanna grab the two circles and the black face and weld it. And then you're wondering about these holes. Well, now because it's enclosed, I can click on this image and go to contour and hide all. And it's gonna give me a perfect black face that goes behind it. Okay, so let's go to arrange and send it to the back so you can see what this new face looks like. Oops, did I not? arranged into the front. Okay, here we go. So now, if there was a line running down here, here, or through the mouth, it's completely covered, so it's gonna look seamless. Because you remember the little tongue is small. It, you would still see some of the black, as well as the two little white eyes. You will still see the black, so that's why we wanna do that. All right, let's zoom out again. And we are almost done. All right, so that those are all the colored pieces. You saw all the colored pieces are gonna be seamless. So it's gonna look amazing. Um, now, Mickey Mouse though, this black, it, it's gonna be in nine squares, nine pieces. So I do recommend that you use glitter cardstock, black glitter cardstock for this. It will really hide the seams and make it blend in so you're not gonna see it. Um, if you don't want to do it this way, I would recommend watching the previous video where I show you how we isolated the black pieces so that you can cut those like you would the colored pieces. It would be in pieces like the glove and the eyes. And then you would have a black background in addition to that. Okay, so let's build our squares so that we can slice this up into pieces that we can cut. Um, go to your shape, bring in a square, and we're gonna change the size of this square to 11 inches. So you're gonna go up to the size and type in 11. And technically you can cut 11 and a half, but I don't like dealing with half inches, so I always do 11. And very rarely does it matter, because in this case, he's basically 25 inches, right? 11 and a half plus 11 and a half is 23 inches. I would have needed another square anyway, so it doesn't really impact this. As well as the length, the length is 30 inches. I would need three rows, no matter whether it's 11 inches or 11 and a half. 
All right, I know I'm trying to convince everyone to just be on board. <laughs> okay, so we have our 11 by 11 square. We're gonna go to the position feature. We want everything to be on a whole number. So this one right now is at 15.6 and 6.33. We're gonna round this to 16 and this to six. So what we're basically telling design space is on the X axis, you wanna go over 16 units, go down six units, and here's the start of our square. It's just like middle school math all over again. <laughs> We're gonna duplicate that square, put it over here, put it close enough, you don't have to do the math, you can just round. So round to the nearest whole number, 27.6 becomes 28. This is already at, um, what happened here? Does that need to be 27, did I miss that? Okay, um, and six, and then duplicate it. Hold on, this is at 16 plus 11, oh yeah it is. Okay, <laughs> put it close enough, 38.4 becomes 38, 6.11 becomes six, okay? So we have three squares that are completely flushed with each other. So hit the shift key, grab all three squares, and you can tell that we grabbed all three squares by looking at this, right? It's all highlighted in the blue, but you can also see in the right hand, right hand side panel. These three are um, selected. We're gonna duplicate it so that we're grabbing the three squares that are already flushed with each other. We're just gonna make this set flushed with the top. So round to the nearest whole number again, 16 and 17. And then we're gonna duplicate that again and here's our nine perfectly flush squares. And you need to round this to the nearest whole number. This is already at 16, this becomes 28. The reason why you want this is because we wanna cut up Mickey Mouse into nine pieces that like just butt up next to each other. That way we can tape it, we can um, basically try to make it as seamless as possible. And you don't want any gaps because you don't want any holes in your background and then you don't want any overlays because then how do you know where the pieces go? When they're completely flush like this, the pieces butt up against each other and you know exactly where it ends. You wanna push it up to each other and then tape it. It's the easiest way, I promise you. All right, so now we have nine perfect squares here. What you wanna do is scroll down in your right-hand side panel and my face is in the way here, so let me move myself out of the way. Okay, um, you want to select the black background Go to Arrange, send to the front. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that you, we can see where the seams will be, okay? When you're doing this, you just wanna make sure you don't have something like this. Do you see how that nose? This would be sliced off. We don't want anything like that. We want big pieces that are easy to handle. You don't wanna have to keep track of a sliver of a black piece, okay? First of all, it can get ruined easily when it's trying to be cut, when it's being cut and then two it's just so easy to lose pieces like that so we don't want that what we want are big big pieces we don't want that where the thumb is sliced off right and then we want to try to keep this tail at most in two pieces we don't want it in three pieces okay so let's zoom out now that we know what we want and let's just kind of see what this gets us I am trying to see. <laughs> um, I think I did it like this last time. All right, let's zoom in to see. Okay, so this is a big piece here. This is a piece that's all looking good to me. Yes, this looks good to me. This tail, um, I mean, it's just a small sliver. You're gonna do it in black glitter cardstock. You're not even gonna see that seam. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Yeah, this is all good. These are big pieces. Let's zoom out. And we. it looks like we don't need these two squares up here, so we can just grab them and hit delete. Okay, now we're gonna slice, okay? One square at a time and the image. So grab this square and the image, slice and we're just gonna make our way around this image, okay? If slicing is grayed out, it's because you picked up more than two pieces. 
or you basically you didn't pick up two pieces. You either picked up one. Okay, when this happens, this is a glitch in design space. Just undo it and slice something else, okay? So we'll start up here and slice. Um, like I was saying though, if you try to slice something and you don't get the slice button, it's because you didn't pick two items. You either only picked up one or you picked up more than two. It's almost always unless it's glitchy. All right, so I think we have one more cut to make this one. All right, so I'm gonna move all the pieces over and keep them in order. Um, I always do this because it's just easier when you get it off the mat. Sometimes I flip it the other way and then I have a hard time piecing it together. So if I do this, then I know exactly where the pieces go. This one looks pretty obvious though. These are all sizable pieces. It's gonna look great and easy to handle. All right, that's it. So we're gonna grab all of this. We don't need any of this and we're gonna delete it. All right, let's go to the make it screen so I can show you some tips and tricks here. Okay, here is our white. Remember what I was saying? You can move these pieces and make it more efficient. Um, you can do something like this and move. So the buttons are together. If we were really good, we would have separated the buttons. You probably could have put this button up here, this piece over here, or you can even rotate this. I mean, you can make it however, like if you have scraps, you can make it fit to your scrap paper. Um, so the more separated they are, the easier it is to make it more efficient, right? Because these two are moving together. So you need to make sure that they both fit in. Um, so if they were separated, it would be a lot easier, right? Maybe we could have put this one, moved it down a little bit, moved this one up a little bit, it would have fit. But because they're together, you need to be more careful. So maybe something like, well, that works. So the next time you have, you know, three by 12 right here, that's a big chunk to use and as well as this piece up here. All right, let's look at our black pieces. So this tail can definitely be moved to some other page like this one. So <laughs> click on the tail, click on the three dots, move object, and we can move it to another page. I think it would fit fine on this one. So we're moving it over here. Just make sure though that you don't have it touching anything else because if it's like this, you're gonna have, your tail's gonna be messed up as well as the hand, okay? So make sure that they don't overlap one another. Let's look at this one. This one's got plenty of room to move stuff over. So we definitely will do that. Let's see, that's, whoa, what happened there? Okay, so let's move this piece. Um, move object. Let's move it to this one. So these two are fine. Let's go back and move this one. Three dots, move object. Let's move it to this one. So we're saving a lot of space here. Hopefully I can make this work. Oh man, this is so close. Ah, this one's not gonna work. Okay, so we gotta move it somewhere else. Move object. Does it fit anywhere else? Oh man, all right, it might need to be its own page. But you can see, you can move it around, make it a little bit more efficient. Let's look at our, that's our tongue, and then here's our face, nothing else to do there. Um, so our black pieces, I feel like we could still probably work on that, but that's up to you. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces of black, one white, a small piece. This can be a scrap piece from some other pink that you've used. And here are the shoes and the pants. Now the pants, I mean, I would probably do something like this, just so next time my scrap paper is a little bit more usable, but that's just me. All right, 
I hope this was helpful. This was way faster and way easier than the previous one, but you waste more paper here because you're using glitter cardstock and you're using it for the background. So depends on how you look at it. The other one had more pieces too, but it would have been 65 pound cardstock. All right. Thank you so much. Please tag me when you finally make this. I can't wait to see this. This was a special request and it's someone I believe is doing it for their grandson's birthday party. So I think it's going to be so cute. All right. Thanks guys. Please post a comment, questions, and if you have a special request, please post it on the actual video or post and then send me an email. It's Ann, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com and that way you can give me more details. You can tell me I really want it at 36 inches or I really want to make it this color or add a name, whatever it is. I can help you with that, all right? Because I think it's easier to learn um, doing your own project because a lot of times you can walk away and say, oh, I got it and then you want to try to customize it to your piece and you don't know how to customize it. So that's what I'm here for. And then you have to recreate it anyway in design space. So I feel like it's a really good learning process. All right, that's it for me. Bye guys.